Uh, today's speaker is the founder and chief executive officer of the Institute for Energy Research. It's a 501c3 educational foundation with offices in Houston and Washington, D.C. He is an adjunct scholar at the Cato Institute and the Competitive Enterprise Institute, a visiting fellow of the Institute of Economic Affairs in London, and an honorary senior research fellow at the Center for Energy Economics at the University of Texas at Austin. He holds a BA an MA in economics and a PhD in political economy, and he has received the Julian L. Simon Memorial Award in 2002 for his work on free market approaches to energy sustainability. He's the author of seven books, including um, one that I guess is most topical to today is Capitalism at Work, Business, Government, and Energy, which are on sale. Uh, I would advise you to pick one up if you can um, out on the, the, the table today. Uh, for more information, about him and his work, you can be found at the website www.politicalcapitalism.org. Uh, please join me in welcoming for Food for Thought Lunch, uh, Dr. Rob Bradley. Thank you very much, Sean. It's uh, great to be here. This is so beautiful. Uh, I don't want to disparage Houston, Texas, but uh, <laughs> there's a lot of oil and gas and a lot of air conditioning. That's all I can say. Um, Let's see if I can get this on here. One of the hardest things. It's the first thing I've done all weekend uh, that uh, Jennifer hadn't helped me with. Uh, but uh, next time I'll uh, have her help me. Well, uh, we have a full crowd, uh, stand, practically standing room only. I really appreciate everyone uh, taking time out to uh, come to this event. I was in the food line, and uh, one gentleman asked the other, have you heard the speaker today? And uh, the answer was no. Uh, but uh, all the talks here are good. So, uh, number one, congratulations. Number two, uh, the pressure's on. Um, as far as my introduction, uh, 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 thank you, Sean, for that. Uh, the quick, the short introduction is that I once worked at Enron, and I'm the smartest guy in the room. So, uh, a little humility's good. Uh, if you're like me, every time you start taking yourself seriously, something bad happens. So uh, I like to, uh, uh, a little self-deprecating humor is good. Uh, uh, as Sean said, today's topic uh, is incredibly uh, relevant. I have been very interested in the idea of uh, uh, the theory and the practice of political capitalism uh, for really my and, uh, just about my entire career, the interaction of business and government. And with the, uh, the end of the Bush administration and with the Obama administration, it is certainly uh, headline news. And a lot of the protests that are going on here from the left, there's a distrust of capitalism. And some of them get it in the sense that uh, it's crony capitalism. And that's a term, uh, Joe, you used at breakfast this morning, which uh, I think is a very good term to uh, capture the uh, intersection of, uh, of business and government. Um, I'll start off with a quotation from uh, Frederick Bastiat. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I think this group has an informal affiliation with the uh, Bastiat Society, which is in Charleston, and I think there's one in Dallas now, group of business people that have come together that are very interested in market capitalism versus political capitalism. And this quotation from uh, over a century ago is, quote, when plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men living together in society, they create for themselves in the course of time a legal system that authorizes it and a moral code that glorifies it. And when Bastiat's talking about plunder, he's talking about legal plunder, which is uh, government and often uh, government uh, and business. Um, I think uh, the best way to talk about this subject is to is to very briefly go over the perils of interventionism, uh, whether it's selected in, uh, intervention in the market economy or it's wholesale uh, government planning. Uh, and I think left and right should agree that government is a very dangerous institution because government has a monopoly on force. That is how we define government as the an institution that has a monopoly on force in a certain geographical area. Uh, government is a, uh, a necessary evil, um, uh, uh, 
and it's something that should be uh, watched very, very closely. Uh, secondly, there is, uh, I believe, a natural market order. I think economists more and more are coming to this view, even though the American Economics Association was formed in 1885 as a protest against Adam Smith's invisible hand. Uh, uh, believe it or not, but uh, economists, relatively speaking, are more free market than the other social science disciplines. But uh, there's a lot of work still to be done with the Paul Krugman's uh, of the world. Um, but uh, uh, certainly we understand more than ever before, and it has be become mainstream uh, in the economics profession that central planning, socialism, uh, 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 Marxism, uh, is uh, uh, intellectually uh, uh, dead in the sense that uh, we understand that the knowledge we need for economic efficiency does not reside in government or uh, in the minds of uh, planners, uh, would-be planners or actual planners. The knowledge that we need for an efficient economy resides in all of our dispersed and often contradictory knowledge, and it's the price system, profit loss, and prices that bring together our uh, knowledge into a whole, uh, if you will. And the other uh, important uh, point about government intervention is that uh, uh, there's a term, government goes to those that show up. Uh, that uh, government goes to the most organized at the expense of the least uh, organized. And the result of this is class conflict where you have net taxpayers and net tax consumers. Uh, uh, you have uh, sort of a ruling class and elite with uh, uh, government and often business and it also results in economic stagnation. And it's a shame that the great uh, recession that we have been going through, and I don't think we're out of uh, yet, uh, that we've had to relearn the lessons that were not learned uh, from uh, the Herbert Hoover slash FDR New Deal and all the government intervention that was implemented uh, 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 really during the boom, the artificial boom of the 20s and certainly during the 1930s where government for the first time in American history became very proactive in trying to address uh, the uh, unemployment problem. Uh, why big government? If big government doesn't work, uh, why, why um, uh, is liberty in such peril around the world and even here in the United States? Uh, and there's a Milton Friedman quote uh, that says a lot. He, says, uh, he said some decades ago, quote, the two greatest enemies of free enterprise in the United States have been on the one hand, my fellow intellectuals, and on the other hand, the business corporations of this country. Now, why are intellectuals uh, uh, so against uh, the free market, even though the free market works? Well, that's a, uh, it's a complicated uh, issue, but uh, it sort of gets back to the smartest guys in the room, that uh, social science intellectuals or, or intellectuals of all the disciplines uh, feel that uh, uh, the natural outcomes of the market are uh, inferior, they see a problem, they want to solve it, and they, the intellectual, is smarter than the average person, and that they have the, uh, they have the plan uh, to make things better. But business corporations, my golly, what, what an uh, insinuation uh, here, that, uh, bu that business corporations are one of the uh, greatest enemies of free enterprise, and that's something I want to look into uh, today. Uh, some decades ago, I published a treatise on oil and gas uh, regulation in the United States. That's me. Uh, it's a miracle what Botox does for you today, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but uh, when I finished the book, uh, there are two quotations that I had at the very front on the, on the title page that to me summarize the experience of the inter intersection of government and the oil and gas industry. One was from a court decision, federal court, a lower court, that said, quote, there were as many objections as there are differing economic interests. So basically, you have a lot of parties to a regulatory situation, and these different business interests uh, uh, have pulled out their calculators, or whatever they had back then, uh, maybe slide rules or something, uh, and they uh, said, well, this is what we're for. Uh, we're for the free market, we're for government, uh, and we're for a little government here, but not there. We like this little uh, piece of it. 
uh, sort of calculator morality uh, for uh, business interests. Uh, Self-interested, profit maximization. The other quotation from Alfred Kahn uh, is, quote, one interference with competition necessitates another and yet another in an industry of rugged in individualists becomes more and more tightly enmeshed with the government to which they originally turned in hope of protecting themselves from competition. Uh, and this uh, gets back to the Mises interventionist thesis, uh, Ludwig von Mises, a great free market economist, how government intervention leads to problems and often the government doesn't remove the intervention, but they add intervention. And Mises' example was we have monetary inflation, we have monetary expansion that leads to inflation, people complain, you have price controls or shortages, people complain, the government gets in the allocation business. And um, if you look at the history of government intervention in industry, you can often trace how one intervention leads to another uh, over uh, decades and uh, even uh, more than a century in some cases. And uh, so this continues to be an interest of mine is to look back at all the different government interventions, local, state, and federal, and ask, well, why did it occur? Uh, and what were the, uh, the implications? Who was for it? Who was against it? Uh, did uh, regulation grow? Uh, and the answer is uh, typically yes. Um, and I'm um, coming up with the thesis that most intervention, not all, but most, had active business support uh, behind it. Doesn't mean the whole industry or all the businesses, but there is a well-defined business interest that saw advantage in the regulatory regime. It was a socialist, a Marxist historian, Gabriel Coco, who uh, familiarized or popularized the term political capitalism. The Marxist view is that capitalism is inherently unstable, that businesses don't make uh, profits over time, and that they have to uh, 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 go to other countries, exploit other markets to keep their profits up, and they have to go to government. So the socialist historian, looking very closely at why do we have government intervention is seeing lots of business influence and, and uh, Coco and others are going, aha, capitalism is inherently unstable. It's the business interests that are going to the government. Capitalism is corrupt. We need to get to a new economic uh, order. Uh, and of course, you, have, you, gotta, you have to ask them the question, well, who regulates the regulators? Uh, uh, there's a romantic view of government that somehow they're different from the rest of us. Maybe not. Uh, political capitalism, he defines as a utilization of political outlets to attain conditions of stability, predictability, and security to allow corporations reasonable profits over the long run. And Murray Rothbard, a great libertarian theorist, um, uh, grasped Coco's view and popularized it. So you have the, uh, the socialists and the libertarians sort of coming together uh, on this point, which was interesting. Uh, how do you define it? Uh, this is an article I wrote for uh, one of the encyclopedias. That political capitalism is a private property market system shaped by special interest government intervention where regulation, subsidies, and tax code provisions, those three things, are less reformer driven outside of the system than uh, business driven. And there are two avenues to success, and there's a long history of libertarian scholars who uh, came up with this. Uh, the free market means where uh, businesses have to uh, serve consumers in an open market, uh, volunteerism, and the political means where government restriction or favor provides a margin of success beyond what consumer preference alone would provide. Market entrepreneurship versus political entrepreneurship, and there's a term called rent-seeking that economists use with political entrepreneurship. Here's a bunch of terms. A lot of these come from the left, uh, from socialist Marxists on uh, political capitalism. Maybe the most common term is a term not up here that Joe.